Hi, welcome to Easy Exposure, the tutorials about photography. My name is Oksana, and today I'm going to show you how to multiply person in an image. First, I will walk you through on how to take images for creating this effect. And then after, I take you in post-production and we will be combining images together. So, let's get started. So this is what you have to do. First of all, put your camera on a tripod and don't change its position. You can even use cable release so you don't move the camera. Also use manual exposure mode so your exposure doesn't change from frame to frame. And which exposure to use, it's up to you. It all depends on the lightning conditions and uh, whatever you want to achieve. But just make sure that your aperture is uh, set to the one which will give you a desired depth of field so that your subject, uh, if the, your subject is moving, your subject is still in focus, if that is your goal. Also use manual focus so it doesn't change from frame to frame either. Because if uh, your focus will be changing then it's going to be more difficult to stitch your pictures in post-production. You can always pre-focus with uh, autofocus and then when you're taking pictures switch to manual. Also use manual white balance for the same reason so it doesn't change from frame to frame. Usually it doesn't because your lightning conditions usually don't change and you don't move the camera but to be on the safe side just use manual white balance depending which light you're shooting under. Also, pre-plan in your head positions of your subject in a frame. Just think, where do you want your subject to be placed in the frame and which pose you want your subject to take. You can even make up some special story, make, some, make the photo interesting. And then finally, take multiple photos with your subject in a different positions in a frame. So. Place your subject in one position, take picture, then tell your subject go and uh, make a different pose somewhere else in the frame. But just keep in mind, if your subject is overlapping in the frame, it's more difficult to put post process the picture in Photoshop. But sometimes this way photo can be more interesting. It's always better to take more photos than less so you have more choices later. Now when you know how to take photos for this effect, let me show you how to post-process them. And here is the photo we're going to work on today. And this photo was taken totally spontaneous. I was having a photo shoot in the park with this model and then I saw this cool table and I was thinking, what if we create a photo where she's sitting around this table? And here are all the photos I took to create the, uh, the picture. As I already told you, to create a photo like this, you need to put your camera on the tripod, all manual settings, and then you let your model uh, move around the frame and uh, take a different poses in the different positions in the frame. And of course, I took more pictures than I needed. I actually let her sit on each of those chairs in the different poses, and then at the end, I chose which will fit the best to the photo. First I was thinking maybe I'll create a photo where she's sitting in each of those chairs, but then when I started to add it, I find out that it was just too much, it was just too crowded. And let me just show you the individual photos like this. As you can see, she is moving around the table. And as you can see, there is a slight changes on the background. As you see, leaves are m moving a little bit, but it's not a big deal. Because your light might slightly change while you're taking pictures, or wind will move leaves or trees if you have it, but it's not a big deal. So just take as many photos as you want, as fast as you can. So in post-production, you have more choice 
more pictures to choose from to create your collage. And here my final choice, the three photos I decided to combine. I thought on those pictures her poses were the strongest, the most interesting and by composition I think those three will fit well together. I actually shoot raw files on the, all the time and as a part of my workflow I use Lightroom to process my raw images and also Lightroom is integrated with Photoshop really well. To combine these three images together we will have to open them in Photoshop as layers and you can use Lightroom for that, you can also use Bridge for that and there are also a few other ways. So I usually use Lightroom and I have my images right here. I added them to quick collection by clicking on this dot right here and then the quick collection. I don't have any other images to be distracted by. And if you need to do any adjustments to your raw files, you can do them in develop module. If you use Lightroom, you know how to do it. You can adjust your exposure your contrast, your highlights, whatever you need to do to the image. And here is the important part, if you are doing a collage combining three images together like we are doing today, you need to sync all the changes you did to one image with other images you are going to use. So you have to highlight all the images and starting with the one you just adjusted and then click on sync and then sync all the adjustments you did to this image so these adjustments will transfer to all other images and you have consistency when you combine them together. Now we have to open them in Photoshop as layers so we have all the images highlighted and you can highlight the images by clicking on the first one then holding shift and clicking on the last one and then you right click and then go to edit and instead of adding in Adobe Photoshop you have to click on open as layers in Photoshop and this when images is going to open as layers in Photoshop and it depending how many images you open at a time how heavy the images are and how fast your computer is it might take a while the more Im images you open the bigger they are the longer you will have to wait if you have a slow computer it might be a better idea to export them as a jpegs and open jpegs since jpegs are smaller files if you don't have lightroom another way to open your images in photoshop as layers is through adobe bridge this program usually comes with photoshop so you open the bridge and here you have a window where you have all your folders from your computer. You choose the folder you need where your photos are located. Then your photos will appear in this window which is called content and you will have to highlight them, the pictures you want to open in Photoshop by clicking shift, holding shift and clicking on first and last photo. And then you go to tools, Photoshop and load files into Photoshop layers and then you click on this and your files will load to Photoshop as layers. At the moment I'm opening JPEG files and the JPEGs will take much faster to open than the raw files. As you can see here we have our image and we have three layers with our three images right here in the layer panel and the way how it works the layers stack one on top of each other so if we click on this eye this layer which is on top will disappear and reveals the layer which is underneath and when we click on this eye it will reveal the layer which is underneath and to combine all those layers together into one picture with three of my models are sitting around the table we will use mask technique but before we start to work on our image I would like you to take a look at this file which I created for you to understand masks better it's very obvious we have two layers one of them obviously red 
and this layer is on top that's why you see the red right here and one of them is blue which is underneath so when we hide our la red layer we can see blue layer but what if we want to hide red layer just partially and reveal blue layer partially it's possible and it's possible by using masks. The best way to do it is using masks. Of course, you can also erase this layer with eraser, but when you do that, it's not easy to get it back, only go back in the history. But if we're using masks, if you make a mistake, it's really easy to fix it. So make sure that your red layer is highlighted and we click on the icon right here underneath and we got another square which means mask and at the moment it's white and make sure it's highlighted because you can also have your layer highlighted make sure your mask is highlighted and white means reveal so that's why our red layer is revealed but what if we grab our brush and paint with black voila we erasing our red layer with black and you can also adjust your brush hardness as you can see if your brush is soft what happens and if your brush is hard what happens so that's how it works and very useful part we can also recover that layer by painting with white instead we just choose a choose white color and we paint with white and we're getting our layer back. How cool is that? And one more trick I would like to show you is make sure your mask is highlighted right here. Is when you click Command I, we invert our mask. So wherever you painted with black is white now, where you painted with white is black now, and obviously. Where we had blue is red, where it was red is blue right now. This is very useful and we are going to use this technique on our image. So let's go back to our image so we can use it. So we are back to our image, but before we start to creating masks and play with them, we have to make sure that our layers are aligned. And to make sure that our layers are aligned and align them if they are not, Hi, we are highlighting on the layers by holding shift on your keyboard and then clicking on the first and the last layer and going to edit and auto align layers and auto is ok so we click ok and it might take a little minute while it's processing And as you can see, my layers were not 100% perfectly aligned because I can see there's a little bit border around it, so I just crop it off real quick. I'm not going to be super precise with my cropping because I want to do it fast. It's not what the video is about. So I'm just grabbing crop tool and cropping the layer. Double click. Here we go. And now we are ready to add our masks. So first I am hiding two top layers and the bottom layer is going to be our base layer, our background layer and we would like we will have everything from this layer. Like our background is going to be this layer. Then we add the layer on top. But as you can see, you can't see our layer at the bottom, so we have to mask this layer out. And to do this, I also have a reflector in this layer. My assistant got in the frame with his reflector. So we make sure that this layer is highlighted and we add mask to it by clicking on this icon. And now we added the mask, which, white, which is white at the moment. And what are we going to do? is paint her with a black in mask and by doing this we are going to hide her also you want your brush hardness to be down you want a soft brush because then you can blend much better so we hidden her but we need the opposite 
Instead of hide her, we need to reveal her and hide everything else. So this where this inversion technique comes handy. We're going to click on Command I. And as you can see, she is revealed now. How easy is that? So let's try it again on the third layer. So we show the third layer. Now you, we can't see nothing what is underneath. We make sure layer is highlighted. We add the mask, which is white right now, and we are painting her with black again. Painting everything in with black. And click Command I. Ta-da! She is back. If you need to do any adjustments to the image, you can always like paint with black or white. Like for example, let me just try. Like see when I paint her black, I'm hiding her from the image. When I paint her white, I am revealing her from the image. Sometimes when you have um, people overlapping the photo, you have to do more precise work. You might need to zoom in and brush everything precisely but if you have an image like this where they're not overlapping it's really easy and fast to do if you shot your image right if your camera was on the tripod without moving significantly if your exposure was consistent as you can see this was super easy to do that's all for today i hope you enjoyed today's lesson and you learned something new today Masks and layers are such an important part of Photoshop and knowing masks and layers you can do so many things. I also would like to point out that we have a new section on my photo forum on my website easy-exposure.com and this section is photo edit section. It has two parts. In one part which is weekly photo edits where I will post the link to my Dropbox where you can download one of my raw files and edit it, either in Lightroom or Photoshop or some other software, processing software, and then you will post your resized JPEG on the forum and then we will see how different people process the same photo. Please check it out, this new section on easyexposure.com and I will post the link uh, to the section in the description below. So, thank you for watching and I see you next time. Bye bye.